we, I've got a, a reading passage here about green vehicles. I wanted to make sure you knew what we were talking about. So um, would somebody read the first two paragraphs aloud? Volunteer, anybody? Learn about green vehicles. Yes. What makes a vehicle yes. green? EPA developed the Green Vehicle Guide to help you find information on vehicles that are more efficient and less polluting. Vehicles that operate primarily on gasoline or diesel have historically accounted for over 99% of cars and passenger truck sales. However, sales of cars that operate on other fuels, particularly, particularly electricity, are growing. New models of both electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are entering the market in increasing numbers each year. Other alternative fuel vehicles include those that run on compressed natural gas, CNG, or E85, a mixture of about 85% of ethanol and 50% of gasoline. Okay, thank you. Let's look at a couple of words um, for you, for your pronunciation. Uh, Vehicles usually is, you know, stretched out a little bit more than your pronunciation. Vehicle. Can you say vehicle? Vehicle. Vehicle, vehicle right. You were compressing it so that most English speakers wouldn't have understood it. Um, that's, that's the one that really struck me. So vehicles that operate primarily on gasoline or diesel have historically accounted for over 99% of car and passenger truck sales. However, sales of cars that operate on other fuels, especially electricity, are growing New models of both electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are entering the market in increasing numbers each year. Here, I think every major automobile manufacturer now has some kind of electric vehicle but um, they're not promising how the electricity was made. That's not their problem. All they need is a motor that runs sometimes on the power it's gotten from being plugged in. Now, I've had a hybrid automobile for 16 years now. Um, it's a Toyota, a Japanese brand, and it's not a plug-in, but it's made so that the gasoline motor not only turns the wheels, but turns a um, dynamo in the motor that creates additional electricity. And so the car sometimes moves based on the electricity that it's generated. And when that gets low, it goes back to gasoline and the gasoline motor also rolls the car and creates more electricity. So it's kind of a, you know, a shift and off and on taking turns situation. And, you know, those cars have been around for 16, 17 years, and they're fairly popular. Now, my grandson is driving a car that generates its own electricity when he plugs it in to the wall outside his house. 
it's, it's got a, instead of a gas gasoline tank, it actually has a small gasoline tank for when the electricity runs out. But most of the time, his car runs only on electricity because it'll go, you know, 250 kilo kilometers on the gasoline um, and also on the electricity. So he doesn't drive that much. You know, he goes, drives to college, to university and back and, you know, goes shopping and stuff like that. So every night he plugs the car in as if it were an electric razor or a toaster or a microwave. It's just another electrical appliance and the battery charges up overnight and in the morning the battery is full and he drives off using electricity. So, you know, the, and that car is almost 10 years old. So this is not really brand new technology. Um, for also for 10 or 15 years, there have been buses here uh, and some trucks that run on what's called biodiesel. And what that means is usually people, people make these motors. Somebody has made a motor that will create energy from vegetable oil, used vegetable oil. So it's been used in a restaurant to fry potatoes or fry other stuff. And then it's recycled. It's given to people who use biodiesel and they fill up the tank, the diesel tank in their car with this used frying oil and people drive the bus or the truck burning the, the vegetable oil. It kind of smells, it does pollute some because it smells like vegetable oil. <laughs> it does have a smell. So there is some pollution, but it's apparently more ecologically friendly than real diesel that's made from petroleum. Um, now, ethanol has also been used, ethanol, I think it's said, uh, I'm looking at the things across the bottom, has also been used for a couple of decades, for 20 years. Um, and what it's been used for is the gasoline that we buy is say 20% ethanol. Ethanol is a gas created by, um, by cows farting. <laughs> when cows let off gas, they are putting ethanol into the environment. They create ethanol by um, putting corn and other grains in, into a chamber in which they decay. And the gas that comes from that decay is called ethanol. So that's been used for quite a long time. I have never seen a vehicle that uses compressed natural gas or that uses hydrogen. Um, has anybody? Uh, well, I, I did never uh, see any car like um, this two kind of cars. But recently, I because I'm basically from Morocco and I saw, um, uh, you know, like, uh, in, like news in a news that uh, there is a Moroccan who invades a car, a car based on uh, green hydrogen. Oh, so, okay. yeah. I wonder yeah. what green hydrogen is. Okay, so I'm going to 
uh, click on hydrogen and see what they tell us. Hydrogen. It's here. Who wants to read this text? Several ways to make hydrogen and water is one of them. And obviously if you make it using water, as long as you have water, um, that is a green hydrogen. So that's very interesting. Thank you, Daima. Welcome. Um, okay, so let's, I'll try to go back on this one. Um, the other one was compressed nat natural gas. I know that when I have been in France, um, they have their buses and their taxis all run on alternative fuels and they're all different. So there's a lot of electric vehicles. There are some hydrogen vehicles, buses and cars, taxis. Um, there are, I'm sure there are compressed natural gas ones. Um, so they are experimenting with different fuels for public transportation. And that's really interesting, you know, you can't tell by looking at the vehicle, what it burns, how it makes its wheels go round. But on the vehicle, they have a sign that says, this vehicle powered by whatever. So it's educational at least. Uh, and I think that's primarily in Paris. I don't know about other places in France. Um, has anyone seen any other kind of green vehicle? So we're in Morocco. Wait a minute, Karim. Naima, we're in Morocco. Um, I'm from Morocco, but I'm living in Dubai right now. Oh, so yeah. you saw that in Dubai. No, uh, the, the news, it was about uh, a guy from a Moroccan and it's in Morocco who invented, okay. yeah, that car uh, that's gonna be like uh, starting only uh, using the green hydrogen. Yes. But here, but here in Dubai, uh, we start to see a lot of uh, electric cars, uh, especially the Tesla, Yes. Right. It's a lot now, yeah. And we have, yeah, we so have a lot of amazing. Teslas now too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Anybody else see any other alternative fuel cars? Around you. It kind of surprises me in Dubai because that's a petroleum place. That's interesting. Yeah, but I don't know about the petroleum future now. <laughs> Everyone is like looking for the renewable and sustainable energy. Yes. Because, right. yeah, because we need to, to change for our future now, you know, yeah, due to exactly. climate changing. So we have to do and take, you know, uh, serious actions. That's to right. To save the world, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really crucial. No. So it's a topic, you know, I figured talking about green vehicles would be useful for speaking in English. Um, exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important topic. Karim, what were you going to say? I was saying to use bicycle... To use bicycles, yeah, the... right. And that's true in many cities too. They are 
increasing the ease of riding a bicycle in the city, particularly. Yep, absolutely. And our muscles actually create, can create electricity. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, that's when we use muscle power, we're, use, we're creating electric power, very ecologically friendly, no pollution at all. And it actually makes our muscles bigger and stronger so they can produce more. Yeah. As you know, they say, all, one, one stone, two birds. <laughs> yep. We don't all live someplace where you can ride a bicycle to go grocery shopping or, you know, go to the library or whatever. But in some places, that's possible. So I guess another question around this whole idea of green transportation is looking at where we live and choosing ways and places to live that are not destructive of the environment. So there's gonna be a lot of changes over the next 25 years in terms of where people live, how they get around, how they do things like washing clothes and cooking and you know, anything that uses energy. And 25 years from now, I can guarantee you the world is gonna look so different because of this in many ways. Again, a city that I, you know, I'm connected with and where I go when I can is Paris. And Paris now is growing plants all over the city, the walls, the roofs. They're reducing the number of lanes on roads that autos can use and planting trees on the roads. I mean, they're, they're really changing what that city looks and feels like. And they figure when they plant a lot of trees, it will be cooler too. They won't need other energy to cool buildings because the trees cool the air. Yeah, that, that, that's a, a totally perfect. Yeah. And uh, I think we have one city in the world that's called uh, Muster City uh, in Dubai. UAE, all is, right. they are using green energy in, in the city and they don't allow to uh, drive the fuel cars. And all the, the hundred percent, uh, the whole system is green energy. This is, I think, this is a sample for the worst. And uh, this is, a, I think, like a, a home for green energy. This mm -hmm. is an idea for other countries to stop in a pure and use green energy and uh, very interesting. Yeah. 